G'day guys and gal. Just because you aren't a good person doesn't make you a bad person. When I was younger, I said to myself, as long as I make more people laugh than cry, I'm doing all right. And as of today, I've probably made around 12 people cry and a couple hundred thousand people laugh. At this point, my karma should be so good that I could kill an orphan's adoptive parents and still be in the green. There are some space ring chapters that abide by this philosophy. They definitely aren't all necessarily good moral space marines, and they've been declared as renegades and traitors by the Imperium, but they also aren't retarded enough to let Chaos dump a fat load in their rectums. Some of them are actually still trying to be genuinely good and serve the Imperium in their own way, despite being disowned. Those are the marines who we'll be chatting about today. Everyone loves an anti-hero. Before we get started, the sub war against One Mind Syndicate continues, and holy shizen, you guys have been demonic with slapping that juicy red button. At this rate, we will wipe out those wiki reading cum guzzlers in no time at all. So get your mum, dad, cat, local pedophile, and your girlfriend to subscribe. And by girlfriend, I mean create an account for your anime body pillow. Let's be real, you can't like Warhammer and have a girlfriend. It's just not physically possible. That's literally the only reason why I can't get one. It definitely has nothing to do with my obnoxious personality or slightly curved dick. Today we'll go over the Space Marine chapters who have been kicked out of the Imperium and declared Renegade, but still choose to fight for the Emperor in their own twisted way. I also won't be including chapters that went rogue for a bit then were forgiven by the Imperium due to a misunderstanding or whatever. I also won't be including the Alpha Legion because I don't want my brain to hurt. One final thing to note, most of these chapters are super niche and they lack official or even fan art, so don't get a nerdy rage boner if I use images from a similar looking Space Marine chapter instead. Let's get into it. One thing a lot of Fallen chapters have in common is that they were created during the 13th Founding, aka the Dark Founding. So yeah, pretty unlucky with that one. Hence many Renegade chapters fell because they got the short end of the stick. A good example of this is the Emperor's Basilix. A heroic yet sneaky chapter, these men were believed to be descended from Ultramarines and specialised in guerrilla warfare, even using camouflage armour which is pretty bloody rare for Space Marines. They served with honour for years but then their gene seeds started mutating. At first it was pretty chill. A lot of the brothers gained the ability to use basic warp spells and see a small distance into the future, which is awesome. Like these guys probably became the most powerful chapter in the galaxy for a bit. Marines with common sense that could now sense the future. Checkmate chaos. They even had a special squad of nine Terminator veteran psychers called the Kangu. Yes, you heard that right. The Kangu were unstoppable, even before their ability to predict your every move and turn your brain into jelly. But now that they could do that, they were super, super unstoppable. Here's where it gets a bit shady. The Inquisition declared that the chapter's warp-based mutations had become rampant and that the chapter needed to be culled. They made it to seem out like the Basilix had suddenly grown tentacles and started autistically reeing all the time, where in reality they just had cool magic powers. As such, the Inquisition went in, presumably with the Grey Knights as I doubt anyone else could have killed the Basilix, and slaughtered the entire chapter. Only 40 Battle Brothers escaped, and at this point you couldn't blame them if they decided to turn to Titsnitch. But these mad lads didn't. They continued to fight in the Emperor's name, all the while trying to avoid the Inquisition, who was still hell-bent on genociding them for some dumbass hypocritical reason. The Grey Knights were probably just jealous. Another group of unfortunate marines from the Dark Founding are the Blood Eagles, a successor chapter of, you guessed it, the Blood Angels. These hated enemies of the Imperium were declared traitors and renegades for their crimes. Except that's not entirely true. When the Blood Eagles were formed, they were a bunch of wide-eyed, excited kids who just wanted to fight for the Emperor and do their best to avoid becoming mindless berserkers due to the Black Rage. The Inquisition had other ideas. Inquisitor Lord Herol Klenity, fuck me, did someone just bash their head against the keyboard to come up with his name, approached them and was like, Yo, welcome to the Imperium. How would you feel about being excommunicated and declared a traitor of the Imperium, with all your honours and pride stripped? See, Lord Herol was a radical yet respected Inquisitor who loved sending in spies and agents to infiltrate Chaos and then attack it from the inside subtly. He came up with the idea of doing it with an entire Space Marine chapter. The Blood Eagles agreed for some cooked reason, hence pretended to portray the Imperium. Since then, they have aligned with various Chaos Warbands and cults, pulling the strings and subtly leading them to doom and failure, all the while keeping the suspicion off themselves. Honestly, this was a wasted opportunity to make these guys a loyalist Alpha Lean successor, but whatever. 
They're also used by the Inquisition to attack the Imperium for the greater good. An Imperial governor is being corrupt, sending the Blood Eagles to fuck him up and get rid of him. A planet's defense has been lazy, sending the Blood Eagles to fuck them up and give them a rude wake up call. Your girlfriend is cheating on you. Send in the blood, nah, just kidding. There's no way you have a girlfriend, but you get the idea. The Blood Eagles are still in action, and other than the one or two Inquisitors that they chat to, are believed to be traitors and are outright killed on sight. Rough bro. Next up is the Hounded True, who were founded in, you guessed it, the Dark Founding. These guys were pretty big assholes, but they were assholes with a point. They hated Chaos and Xenos and they loved the Emperor, but they thought that the Inquisition and the Imperium were corrupt and evil, which is, you know, a pretty valid opinion. What? Why are you booing me? I'm right. Hence, they came out of nowhere and wiped out a couple Imperial fleets and took over some Imperial planets in an act of liberation. They preached their own philosophy, which was actually reasonably close to the Imperial truth. Life on the liberated worlds improved, and their people saw them as heroes. That's not to say the Hounded True were nice people. Any act of rebellion or dissidence was put down quickly and ruthlessly. They took no prisoners and were happy to massacre anyone in their way. On the flip side, they fought hard against the Tyranids and saved billions of lives. And when the Great Rift opened and shut out chaos everywhere, they joined forces with the Imperium once again to hold back the chaotic onslaught. The chapter is so effective because they have a mastermind at the wheel. Their chapter master, Fius Toll, is a beast who has led his men to victory after victory. There is even a rumor that he has mastered death and was around during the Horus Heresy. This would explain why the chapter continues to honor the victims of the Horus Heresy by wearing the incredibly outdated Mark V power armor. As well as, you know, being renegades and all, they don't really get access to the new DLCs. Despite not receiving Imperial aid, they had quite a large fleet for themselves and they know how to use it. Onwards to the Manticores. Finally, a chapter not from the Dark Founding. These guys were instead from the... Oh, for fuck's sake. The Curse Founding. Damn it. These guys are a walking example of why the Dark Angel's obsession with hunting the Fallen and keeping them a huge secret from the Imperium is so fucking autistic. Basically, this chapter got wind of Cypher been on a planet, so they deployed and forced to go find him. While there, they bumped into the Inquisition, who were like, what the fuck are you doing here? And instead of being like, what's going on? I'm just waiting for a mate. Or making up literally any excuse, or you know, just say they were hunting a renegade dark angel, they instead were like, uh, 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 fuck, and then guiltily ran away, causing the Inquisition to suspect them of heresy and declare them renegade heretics. They literally became enemies with the Imperium because of the fallen secret. Fortunately for the Manticores, one of the Death Watch Marines who were part of the Inquisition's force at the time knew what they were up to, so he was able to tell the other Dark Angel chapters that the Manticores weren't actually heretics. Hence, the Dark Angels decreed that, especially since they allowed themselves to be declared as traitors to keep the secret, the Manticores would forever receive aid and gratitude from the rest of the Dark Angel's successes. Since then, the Manticores have regularly fought for and come to the aid of the Imperium, mostly by helping out other Dark Angels though, because otherwise it's a bit awkward. <laughs> Another chapter from the Cursed Founding, because apparently you need to be dark or cursed to be a renegade, are the Phoenix Brethren. Originally called the Flame Falcons, these successor of the Raven Guard were about as devout and honorable as a chapter could possibly be. The only thing really unique about them was that they saw the Emperor as a god, not just as the epitome of humanity like most of the other Marines saw him as. They did their thing, killed heretics, and praised Space Jesus. Suddenly, a new strange mutation appeared among them. In the heat of battle, or just during an especially righteous wank, a flame falcon would burst into white flames. This random holy immolation would be completely harmless to the flame falcon, but would purge the shit out of chaos. It wasn't warp based, as their librarians had the same chance of it occurring as a normal battle brother, and it only happened to especially devout flame falcon veterans. Just a quick note, they were called the flame falcons before they started randomly lighting a blaze. If I was to join a Space Marine chapter, I would want it to be called, like, Get Bitches or 12-inch Cock to really up my chances of having a good time. The Flame Falcon saw this as a gift from the Emperor. The Inquisition and the Grey Knights did not. Fucking Inquisition, man. Always ruining shit. Hence, they attacked the Flame Falcons and slaughtered the majority of the chapter. The Flame Falcons were able to hold off the Inquisition long enough for a number of their Scout Marines to escape with minimal supplies and gene seed. Eventually, the depleted chapter arrived in an Imperial system and renamed themselves the Phoenix Brethren. Cause you know, Phoenixes are reborn and there's fire and shit, you, you get it. 
This system had been getting clapped by some Eldar, so after driving the Eldar off, the Phoenix Brethren were welcomed by the neglected system and given recruits and sanctuary. The system knew that the Phoenix Brethren weren't in the Imperium's good graces, but because they were such nice guys, they did everything they could to cover for them so they could avoid detection. Some rogue Mechanicus factions started resupplying them, and rogue traders came to their aid to sell them weapons. When the Black Sun Crusade began to help drive back chaos, the Phoenix Brethren selflessly joined and once again started erupting into holy flames. Now, that's a bit of a dead giveaway, hence their secret was blown. However, because they were such chill and nice guys, everyone covered for and delayed the Inquisition long enough for the Phoenix Brethren to sneak away on a battle barge, given to them by a Dark Angel successor. It's always the nicest marines that get fucked the hardest by the Inquisition, isn't it? Now onto a bit of a fan favourite, we have the Soul Drinkers. And fuck me, why would you call a loyalist chapter the Soul Drinkers? That's pretty much begging them to go renegade. These guys deserve and probably will get their own video, but basically they are a chapter of unknown origin founded very early on. They thought they were Imperial Fists, but once their gene seed was analysed that proved not to be the case. They were more likely some kind of Imperial Fist slash Thousand Sun hybrid, but it's not clear. After serving loyally for thousands of years, the Soul Drinkers got wind of an ancient artifact given to them by Rogel Dawn called the Soul Spear which they had lost previously. They went to go retrieve it, but the Mechanicus was like, nah, this is ours now, and the Soul Drinkers were like, no, no it's not, it's ours, and the Mechanicus was like, well come and get it bitch. What the Mechanicus didn't realise is that nothing will stop a Space Marine chapter from retrieving an ancient Primarch artefact, hence the Soul Drinkers had no issue massacring a bunch of Marzi boys and taking the spear. This caused the Inquisition to reach out to the Soul Drinkers and say, unless you hand over all the Marines involved in the fight against the Mechanicus, you will be declared Renegade, and the Soul Drinkers told them to go suck themselves off. The chapter master of the Soul Drinkers was honour bound however to Julie's own captain called Sapedon for some reason. During the duel, Sapedon randomly got super powerful and grew like 8 spider legs, allowing him to kill his previous chapter master and take command. Now, I don't know about you, but growing spider legs isn't a sign of the Emperor's favour. Mutation began to run rampant through the chapter, and whilst it was eventually stopped, many marines had been afflicted. Now physical mutation doesn't mean you have to join chaos. The now renegade soul drinkers continue to fight for the Imperium against its enemies, however they were eventually arrested by the Imperial Fists. When standing trial, Sapedon realised that Titsunich had been manipulating his chapter and pushing it towards chaos. The chaos god did this via the chapter's chaplain and venerable dreadnought. During the trial on the phalanx, the actually evil soul drinkers opened a warp portal and demons invaded. The loyalist soul drinkers decided to try reclaim their honour by holding off the demons while Sapendon killed the two traitor soul drinkers. At the end of the fight, only Sapedon and two of his men remained from the chapter. They decided that there was no place for them in the galaxy anymore, hence stepped through the warp portal and straight into the Immaterium, which is more or less a fancy way of saying committed suicide. To honour their renegade brothers who only wanted to be good, the Imperial Fist continued to record their name, and Gilliman even named a new Primaris chapter after them in more recent times. Bittersweet ending. The next Space Marine chapter is very, very unique. The Warp Knights. Originally an Imperial Fist successor, these guys take whatever gene seed they can scavenge, hence by now they're likely just a hybrid of all the legions in one chapter. They used to fight exclusively against Chaos in the Imperium's name, but then something weird happened, which caused them to completely and utterly abandon all moral codes, laws and rules, and exclusively wage war against the Necrons, and only the Necrons. They packed up all their shit, and went straight into the Eye of Terror, and then into the warp itself. They chill out in the warp until any sign of Necron activity, which at that point they will then deploy in mass to wipe out the Necrons. Due to their very heretical holidays in the warp, as well as the fact that they'll kill anything and anyone standing in between them and a Necron, the Imperium declared these dudes as renegades and traitors, despite them very much still fighting for the Emperor. They're actually super progressive as well, and they'll align with Tau, Elder, and even Orcs for a time if it means killing more Necrons. It's believed that they would even happily hitch a ride with a chaotic warband if it meant they could take down a Necron tomb world. Currently, the Warp Knights are locked in a stalemate battle with a loyalist Salamander successor, due to the Salamander successor living on a partially awakened tomb world. Just fucking team up guys, you don't have to fight for the right to fight Necrons, there's plenty enough for the both of you. I recently made a Flesh Terror video and talked about how they were arguably the most assholey heretical Blood Angel successor that wasn't aligned with Chaos. Well, I was wrong. The Knights of Blood are worse. 
It's not uncommon for a Blood Angel successor to do a bit of team killing. It's just something you gotta accept when you work with them. The Knights of Blood, however, take this a bit too far. Whenever they deploy on a planet, they kill everything and everyone. Their bloodlust is insatiable, and the Imperium declared them Renegade. Despite this, the Knights of Blood still fought for the Emperor, and did their best to try not kill their allies, with limited success. As the saying goes, if Guardsmen don't want to get killed by us, then why are they so killable? The Knights of Blood would do their best until the Tyranids attacked Baal. The Knights of Blood, despite being renegade, returned home to defend the Blood Angel homeworld. They fought valiantly and were killed to the last man, forever ending the Knights of Blood chapter. The idea of a renegade chapter only really begun to emerge later down the track for the Imperium. It was extremely rare for a chapter to depart the Imperium when their Primarch was still around, but the Ashen Claws managed to do it anyway. They are originally a company of Raven Guard who were operating away from their main force. When the Horus Heresy broke out, they chose to remain neutral and not fight for either side, which meant that they were declared enemies by both sides. Nice going, Ashen Claws. They decided to go into exile and became more of a mercenary raiding force than anything else. The only reason why they're on this list is because they vanished from records, they fucked up a bunch of Night Lords. The only chapter to have regular contact with these guys now are the Space Sharks. And even the Space Sharks say that the Ashen Claws are a bunch of degenerates. This is coming from literal shark people, so that's got a sting. As a final honourable mention, we have the Sons of Malice. So, these guys aren't loyalist, and they want to murder the Emperor, but they also want to murder Chaos, putting them in a unique situation of having absolutely no friends whatsoever. Also, they're all slowly dying due to their gods sucking out their souls. Yeah, look, I'd rather be a soul drinker. And that does us for today, guys. Loyalist chapters who have gone renegade. If you enjoyed the video and want to support the channel, then Patreon is the place to be, where only $1 per month give you access to a boatload of Warhammer Hentai. Hit the subscribe button, then hit the real subscribe button for more renegade content. Join the Discord for more memes, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.